what we like uh, is, is you, uh, if you come to many uh, events, uh, the anti-war events and some many other really fine events around town, there's one group that you see here a whole lot. I'd like to take a moment to uh, thank the fine folks of the Service Employees International Union who come out in two rows of the power of Emil Tantachi, uh, Tantanchi, Tantanchi, I'm sorry, Emil Tantanchi. Emil Tantanchi is an <laughs> Iraqi Irish American who grew up in Glendale. <laughs> you can't make that up. <laughs> but Emil graduated from Georgetown in 2006. Uh, he divided his time between studies and, uh, lab and labor campaigns. He's a fluent Arabic speaker. Uh, after graduated, he graduated, he worked in Amman, Jordan, documenting the egregious abuses against migrant and Jordanian workers in the apparel industry. Uh, there, he also conducted extensive research and helped design workshops for Iraqi workers and union leaders on Iraqi labor laws, oil re regulations, and major multinational companies uh, that have, have con currently contracting, uh, contracted in Iraq. Uh, he currently lives in Chicago and works for the Service Employees International Union. Please welcome Emil Tantachi. Greetings, peace activists. How's everyone doing? Not only do I feel privileged to speak here with these dis distinguished guests and Iraq war veterans, but I feel so privileged to come back from Jordan and uh, you might be, I'll tell you a reason why I'm speaking here. We're talking about Iraq, right? Not Jordan. But I'm so happy that I can come back here and share some of my experiences with you uh, tonight. I'm also so honored to have uh, members of SEIU's uh, Local One Retiree Chapter here who really showed up in a great form. So why Jordan, you might ask? The answer is actually quite simple. Uh, and the 4 million displaced Iraqis that David just previously mentioned, 2.2 million of them are now in Syria and Jordan. About, and this is an estimate by the UNHCR, 2,000 flee to Syria every day. 1,000 flee to Jordan every day. And that has brought the total to of uh, Iraqis in Jordan to 750,000, which for a country of six million, obviously has created a huge presence. And it's pretty easy to run into the Iraqis. As you move eastward, away from the business district of Jordan in the west, the, the properties get poor, there, become, there, are more border, there are more beggars in the streets, and if you speak with them, you notice that they speak with Iraqi dialects. These, Iraqi, these Iraqis, try to make a living on, from selling sponges to individual cigarettes. I even once bought an individual cigarette for one of my coworkers and gave them uh, five Jordanian dinars, which is about uh, seven and a half to eight dollars, and that would probably last them for a good solid week or two in Jordan. Iraqis in Jordan lack important resources like health and education. The Jordanian government does not provide these services, which force Iraqis either into illegal work or other work that, uh, where they require permits, which are very hard to get. And when those work permits expire, they, Iraqis have three choices. They, either can, uh, they can either continue to try to get a permit, which is nearly impossible, they can live illegally and unemployed in Jordan, facing the possibility of sanction and deportation, or they can head back to Iraq, where they will again face great danger and oppression, especially if they're Christians or other minorities. But it would be a mistake to place most of the blame on the Jordanian government. It simply does not have the capacity to handle such a huge problem. The crisis is a direct result of Bush's war in Iraq, and Bush needs to deal with it seriously and responsibly. As of February two, 2007, only 466 Iraqis had been resettled in the United States. In that same month, Bush and the State Department announced that they would resettle 7,000. Basically, 7,000 in 2007 
basically the same amount that Jordan and Syria together receive in two to three days. Much more needs to be done. Bush and Republicans like Mark Kirk need to stop skirting the real issues on Iraq, especially humanitarian programs that can assist Iraqis living in Jordan. The longer the war goes on, the more difficult it gets to solve the refugee crisis. Hundreds of thousands of Iraqis are getting ready to leave. Many urban professionals have already fled. Doctors, teachers, nurses, computer technicians, all people that are key to the future of Iraq, are, many of them are gone. I can think of one of my good friends who I used to play soccer with, and our veterans would, would know he lived on the airport road. And when he left, because of his, he was lucky and got uh, education in private school, he had, to, he had to leave because of his permit ran out, and I prayed every day for him that he'd be able to live on Airport Road in Baghdad. But I also came here to speak about one more issue, which is that of Iraqi labor unions, which you might not hear about a lot. For two months, as, it was, uh, as it's been said, I designed workshop for, for workshops for Iraqi union leaders to assist them in their struggle for worker rights. But when they came, they would inform us of devastating truths. Average Iraqi workers are killed on the street every day on their way to work and in their places of work. While unreliable electricity, poor sanitation, and lack of clean water make it even more difficult for Iraqis to live normal lives at home. Despite the fact that the Iraqi government has a new constitution uh, that protects freedom of association, there is still no labor law that has been adopted. And one of the few vestiges of the Saddam era uh, rule is a 1987 decree that bans unions. This is still in force. Just, they just so happen to want to quell any opposition to the ruling uh, Iraqi parliament. And despite the horrific violence, Iraqi unions are tirelessly uh, continuing to organize workers and press for workers' rights in Iraq. What is so significant about Iraq un unions is that they are a secular democratic movement uh, that opposes the US occupation and the proposed oil investment law, which would basically ensure that Iraqis will not benefit from their oil wealth. In fact, it is union staunch opposition to the oil law that drives their opposition to the US occupation. Iraqi unions believe the main reason for the continued U.S. occupation is because, is because the oil law has not yet passed in Parliament because they are putting up a strong fight. I want to leave you with the words, not my own words, but the words of Faleh Abu Umar, who is the General Secretary of the Iraqi Federation of Oil Unions. He says, we wish to, we wish to see you take a true stance for the children of Iraq and for your own. And we always say that history will remember those who advance peace over war. We are not your enemy. We mean you no harm. Allow us to resolve our differences free of outside interference. Please leave our country so that we can heal our wounds as you must heal your own. Both our peoples have suffered enough. Let there be peace for all. Thank you. <laughs>